Hello and welcome to our video on email configuration in Trackit. In this video we're going to talk about how to set up the email accounts for the new Trackit system as far as inbound and outbound communications. In the videos on business rules we talk about configuring some of the rules to handle different email situations. Here we're going to actually show you how to configure the inbound and outbound accounts that the Trackit system will use to process email. The first thing we need to do is make sure the SMTP service on your server is set up properly. So I'm using Windows Server 2012 R2. So this may look different if you're using a different operating system. I'm going to go into my start menu here, and I'm looking for this option right here, Internet Information Services 6.0 Manager. Many times you're going to have a 7.0 manager or one that just says IIS Manager, and that's going to look different and function different, and the easiest way to set this up is to use the 6.0 Manager. So I'm going to go ahead and start that up. You might get a prompt like this. And this is what it's going to look like. Now your SMTP manager here is going to have a different server name, obviously. Expand this one and you'll see SMTP virtual server. For now, I'm going to right click on here and select properties. Once I'm on the SMTP properties screen, I want to look for the delivery tab. And then I want to look for the advanced tab. This is where you're going to configure your SMTP email if you're using an SMTP server outside of your domain. If you're using an SMTP server within your network, or your Exchange server is already within your network, you may not need to do this. For the purposes of this example, we're using an external mail server to show people how they would set that up. So in our particular case, we're using a Gmail account as our email account for Trackit. So here, I've inserted smtp.gmail.com as the smart host. So the smart host is where you configure the SMTP address of the SMTP server that you're going to use. So all I need to do is plug that value in here, and then I can click OK. Now for Gmail, there are some specific security considerations that you have to set up in order for it to work properly. So if I click on Outbound Connections, which is this middle box, you'll notice that the TCP port that the email is going to go out on has been set to 587. That's what Gmail is currently using for their outbound SMTP email, so we set that up here. If your outbound SMTP server uses a different port, you'll need to find out what that is and insert it here. I'm not going to touch any of the other default settings here. I'm going to leave those alone. I'm going to click OK. The last thing I need to configure here is outbound security. And for Gmail, TLS encryption is required, so that box is checked. And then we've also had to provide the Gmail email account that we are using here. So we select basic authentication. We typed in the full email address as that's how you authenticate to Gmail and the password for that. Once I'm done with all these settings, I close out of this virtual server properties. I stop the service and then I restart the service and we should be good to go. Once that is all set up, now we can jump into track it and configure the rest of the email system. Click on my menu, select configuration. I'm going to look here under email configuration. First thing I'm going to do is set up incoming and outgoing emails. So here you click on new under your incoming emails section and you'll get a dialog that looks like this. You want to select your email type, whether it's POP or IMAP. In our particular case, we selected IMAP. We put in the IMAP server address here. We put in our account name and password. And then we set up the port that Gmail uses for inbound IMAP email, which is 993. If you're using a different email provider, this might be different. Gmail also requires SSL, so we have that turned on here as well. There's also a test connection button that allows you to test your setup. You should get a message that says your connection is successful. Once this is all set up, you can save that and you'll see all the settings for your account right here. If you want to add other email accounts here as well, you can go ahead and do that because Trackit will check multiple email boxes for inbound emails. For outgoing email, first off here, notice the note, you have to have SMTP email configured on your web server, which we just did a moment ago. At that point, all you need to do is plug in the from address that you want your emails to be stamped with when they go out. And this from address has to be one of the email addresses configured above in incoming email. There's even a send test email button. If you click on this, you can type in an address and click OK, and the system will try to send out an email to see if the account settings are correct. That's it for configuring your inbound and outbound email accounts. The next thing you might want to look at under email 
is email filters. I'm going to go ahead and select that. These are some built-in email rules that will filter out certain emails from being processed. So there are rules for the sender and rules for the subject. So here for the sender, if it's from Postmaster or Mail Delivery Subsystem or one of these types of things, it's probably an undeliverable email that got bounced back. It's probably something that Trackit sent out and went to an invalid address and it can't be processed. So you can add things to this or remove them from here, however you see fit. As far as subjects, you can do the same thing. There are a variety of messages in here that we've put in by default, but you can remove or add to these as necessary. It's very simple. You just click in there, hit enter, and type the new value. There's one more filter option we have here, and that is filtering inbound email by only accepting email from, and here are your options. We have the default, which is process everything. So no matter who sends it in, we're going to process it and run it through the email business rules. You could say you don't want to process any emails into Trackit unless the requester exists in Trackit. You could say you only want to process email if the technician exists in Trackit. Or you could say you only want to process emails from people who are requesters or technicians in Trackit. It's just up to you how you want to configure your system. By default, Trackit will read every email that comes in. If it looks like it's a valid email and not a bounced or undeliverable message, it'll go ahead and process it. Now we're going to go back. And the last thing we want to look at real quickly here under email settings is email monitor settings. The defaults here should be fine for just about all Trackit customers. There's a stop button here, which stops your email monitor service and restarts it. You will notice that when you create a new email account, the system will tell you you should stop this service and restart it. This is where you would do that. Some advanced settings for your email processing are your response URL and your self-service response URL. When Trackit includes a link back to the system in an email, these are the URLs that will be included in those emails. So if Trackit fires out an email to a technician for Trackit, this is the URL it will include in that email. And if Trackit sends an email to an end user requester who's logged a ticket, this is the URL back to the self-service portal that will be included. There is an option to enable event logging here as well. If you turn this on, then email events will be logged in a log here on the server. You shouldn't have to change the polling interval or the emails to process or anything like that unless tech support or someone else uh, here at BMC recommends you change that setting. So now we're going to go ahead and go back. The last thing we want to look at here, which you covered a little bit in the business rules video, is which business rules to turn on to make sure these emails are getting processed. So we're going to click on SLAs and business rules and we're going to click on the business rules button. You want to look for one here that says create new ticket via email with any subject. This is a generic rule that is going to create a ticket in the Trackit system no matter what is in the subject. Now keep in mind this is after it's already been through the email monitor filters of undeliverable and bounced mail and things like that. So it's going to go ahead and read that email and it's going to create a ticket for it. Mine is already enabled but I'll show you how I did that. Since it's a canned business rule, you can't actually modify it. If I double click this and open it up, you'll notice that the save button is disabled. So even if I check an option here, save is still disabled. So for a system rule, like the ones we provide here, if you want to enable it, you just select the row, click the actions menu here, and click on activate selected rule. I can also deactivate from here if I'd like by just selecting deactivate. And now notice I have activate is the selected option. Now, if there are things in this system rule that you don't like, you can actually deactivate this one. And then you can just click on the actions menu and say copy, create a new rule based on this one, and then modify it to your liking. As far as just a canned setup, if you want to just enable some rules to get started and then see how things go and modify them later, what we would recommend is enabling this create new ticket via email with any subject. Close ticket via email, close assignment via email, get ticket information via email, and possibly update ticket via email. A lot of these other rules that you'll see in here that we have by default, these are meant to notify requesters or technicians if a ticket is changed in a certain way. So for example, this one here notifies a requester if the status of their ticket changes. You can turn these on as well. Just be careful because you don't want to generate 25 emails to a user every time something happens in the system. So a lot of these are put in here as examples. 
You can use them as templates. You can copy them and then create your own custom rules. If you're just trying to get started with a basic setup, you really just want to enable this one right here, create new ticket via email with any subject, and that'll get you started. Then you can play around with some of these other business rules when you have time. The last thing I'll mention here is to keep in mind that when somebody sends in an email to the system and track it tries to create a ticket out of it, it looks at the email address that that email came from and tries to match it up with the requester from the requester table. So we'll go back real quickly and just take a look under all settings, under requesters. These are your users in your system. So if you look at one of the users and you see the email address they have there, if an email comes in from that email address, then Trackit is going to be able to find this requester and link that ticket up with this requester in the help desk. So this has been an overview of how to configure email in Trackit. Please check out our other videos on Trackit 2017 by accessing our online documentation by clicking the help link in the upper right hand corner of the Trackit application. You can also find our documentation page by following the link here, docs.bmc.com slash docs slash display slash Trackit 2017. Some other important links to remember are the Trackit community, where you can talk about Trackit features and functionality with other Trackit users at community.trackit.com. If you need technical assistance, you can find phone numbers and other contact information for our technical support team at support.trackit.com. And for general license renewal and product information, you can always visit trackit.com. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope it has been helpful to you.